how the crosstown methods uh, works okay so first of all uh, in a crosstown method which he proposed in 1972 he says that we should separate the intermittent demand into the two components and what are the two components one is non zero time demand time series another is inter demand interval time series okay so what does that mean okay uh, so let me open the r and uh, for this we need a library called uh, ts intermittent okay that is a time series intermittent uh, intermittent okay so i have already installed it i am running this library or you can say running this package and then i am basically reading a file that is called as ts3.txt in which we have a data set and i am saying that the starting point of this time series is january 2011 with the help of this command and then because it is a monthly demand okay that's why we are setting frequency is equal to 12 so if i run this one okay and then i am i am clicking uh, writing down the y because all the this time series we have stored in the variable called y so as you can observe that so in january february we have the demand but in march we do not have the demand april may okay so first of all what we need to do is we we will see the composite uh, of the two uh, things that right? uh, non zero demand series as well as inter uh, demand interval okay how we can do that we can do that with the help of this particular function which is crosstown.decompose y so if i run this one now you can see that they have uh, with the help of this function we have decomposed this particular series into the two intervals which is a uh, non zero uh, demand time series as well as inter demand time interval so how you can read it as you can see that the first value is 132 then 22 and then uh, there is a zero so we are not writing down this one only writing down the next period in which we have a demand the next period 159 so over here in, in interval we have to write down against every demand size what was the time interval in a particular month whenever we have a demand we are going to write down one okay 22 again one and then after 22 so after how many number of months we have the demand so that is one and two so this is after second month we have the demand so that's why we have written down two then again one two okay that's why we have the second two then one two okay again we have the third two then one two okay so that is this one then we have one two and then in the third month we have the demand that's why we are writing down three right i hope you got the idea how we can decompose this time series into the demand size as well as the interval size so over here you can see that we have this against these values so after this one we have 0 1 3 so this 3 is indicating against 31 so against 74 we have one we have against 190 we have one so this is zero so that's where there is no interval because there is no non-zero demand right okay so i hope you got the idea how we can decompose okay or separate the non-zero time uh, demand time series as well as the interval demand uh, inter uh, inter demand interval time series then what we are going to do is we are going to use both the uh, series or both the part of this time series one is called as the demand size another is called as inter arrival time we use the simple exponential smoothing method to predict these two series separately okay and then once we predicted it okay what is the average demand size of the future what is the average inter arrival time so then we can calculate the average de demand per period so how we can do that simply if we are saying that the average demand is 8 and inter arrival time is 2.1 we can divide this number and we can get the forecasted value so these are the if there is no <laughs> zero value or you can say um, uh, we have the non-zero demand then we can use again simply simple exponential smoothing method using uh, this is basically the demand size this is a, for the inter arrival time series so you can see that we have the formula of the simple exponential smoothing alpha is the smoothing factor xt is basically the actual demand 
zt is basically estimated the non zero demand size whereas q is indicating the number of consecutive non zero demand periods so vt is basically indicating the interval size right and this is how we can calculate the forecasted value yt plus 1 is indicating the future forecasted value but if we have uh, uh, actual demand is equal to 0 then zt plus 1 would be equal to the previous value of your um, non zero demand size this is basically interval time period okay or you can say interval size this is a forecasted value so remember that if uh, your demand occurs um, in every time period then crossed on estimator or your, you can say the crossed on method is exactly equal to the simple exponential smoothing formula so let me first uh, calculate uh, the forecasted value using r with the help of crossed on method so for that again uh, i am running this particular command with the help of this command we are reading the file that is ts3. Text. We are saying the starting value. We are saying the frequency. So this is basically the training data, and then we have a test data in a file called ts3 out dot text. So which I am storing into that y dot test variable. Okay, which are the twelve, and then I am setting the forecast horizon that is equal to the length of the test data, which is equal to basically the twelve because we have the twelve items. Okay and then we are plotting the actual data which is y okay as you can see this is the intermittent demand which we have seen over here as well okay and then as we have decompose it now i want to predict so using how we can apply we can uh, apply the cruston method from the package ds intermittent the function name is cr uh, crossed c r o s t then the variable in which we have the actual data set we are setting the forecast horizon and then we can all we are also saying that plot this uh, forecasted value so if i run this command so after this we have stored into the variable called uh, f dot cross so th they have plotted the fitted value as well as a forecasted value as well as you can see that they have also given us the uh, forecasted value with the help of cross tone this is forecasted value within this is out okay so these are the values of alphas as you can see in the formula okay so the alpha values these are basically the weightage values okay and then we have the demand size interval size demand size interval size okay so this is within a sample this is out of sample okay so let me uh, select these value one by one first of all i am taking the values of alphas okay this is for the demand size this is this is for the interval size what kind of model we have applied that is the creston method and then with the help of this one we can see the component values okay the demand size values as well as the inter interval uh, inter interval time this is with the help of this one we can get the within a sample forecasted value or you can see the fitted value this is giving us the out of sample forecasted value now the question is how we can interpret it, interpret it, this uh, numbers okay the interpretation can be done uh, let's say we have predicted the demand size the demand size is 3.91 and inter arrival time is 1.41 okay so if i am going to divide this 3.9 7 divided by 1.41 as we have seen our formula that is this one okay so this is basically the demand size this is inter uh, interval time that is 3.97 divided by 1.41 so we are getting 2.81 because our the forecast horizon was five days so next five days we have the demand of the product is equal to 2.81 2.81 and so on so if we are saying that uh, so for next five days uh, how many products uh, demand we are going to receive that is going to be 2.81 that is the average demand of any particular day multiplied by five so the total um, demand would be the 14 for the next five days i hope you got the idea how we can um, get the forecasted value with the help of cross method of the intermittent demand and how we can interpret it okay